the Qing conquests of the Ming, also known as the Ming-Qing transition and as the Manchu conquest of China, was a period of conflict between the Qing dynasty, established by Manchu clan A's and Zhuro in Manchuria, and the Ming dynasty of China in the south. Leading up to the Qing conquest, in 1618, Aizen Joro leader Naraisi commissioned a document entitled The Seven Grievances, which enumerated grievances against the Ming and began to rebel against their domination. Many of the grievances dealt with conflicts against Yeya, which was a major Manchu clan, and Ming favoritism of Yeya. Nerhachi's demand that the Ming pay tribute to him to redress the seven grievances was effectively a declaration of war, as the Ming were not willing to pay money to a former tributary. Shortly afterwards, Naraisi began to force the Ming out of Liaoning in southern Manchuria. At the same time, the Ming dynasty was fighting for its survival against fiscal turmoil and peasant rebellions. On April 24, 1644, Beijing fell to a rebel army led by Li Zicheng, a former minor Ming official who became the leader of the peasant revolt, who then proclaimed the Shun dynasty. The last Ming emperor, the Chongzhen emperor, hanged himself on a tree in the imperial garden outside the Forbidden City. When Li Zicheng moved against him, the Ming general Wu Sangwa shifted his alliance to the Manchus. Li Zicheng was defeated at the Battle of Shanghai Pass by the joint forces of Wu Sangwa and Manchu Prince Dorgan. On June 6, the Manchus and Wu entered the capital and proclaimed the young Shunji Emperor as Emperor of China. The Kangxi Emperor ascended the throne in 1661, and in 1662 his regents launched the Great Clearance to defeat the resistance of Ming loyalists in South China. He then fought off several rebellions, such as the revolt of the three feudatories led by Wu Sangwa in southern China, starting in 1673, and then countered by launching a series of campaigns that expanded his empire. In 1662, Zheng Chengong founded the Kingdom of Tungning in Taiwan, a pro-Ming dynasty state with the goal of reconquering China. However, the Kingdom of Tungning was defeated in the Battle of Pengu by Han Chinese Admiral Xilang, who had also served under the Ming. Jurchen Expansion Jianzhou Jurchen Chief Noraisi is retrospectively identified as the founder of the Qing Dynasty. In 1616 he declared himself Khan. His unifying efforts gave the Jurchen the strength to assert themselves backed by an army consisting of majority Han defectors as well as Ming, produced firearms. In 1618 he proclaimed seven grievances against the Ming and the Ming general Li Yongfang surrendered the city of Fushun in what is now Liaoning, province in China's northeast. After Noraisi gave him an Ezemjoro princess in marriage and a noble title, the princess was one of Nerhachi's granddaughters. In a series of successful military campaigns in Liaodong and Liaoshi, the Jurchens seized a number of Ming cities including Shenyang, which they made into the capital of their newly founded later Jin dynasty. Named after a Jurchen polity that had ruled over North China several centuries earlier, the Chaha Mongols were fought against by Dorgan in 1628 and 1635. Under the inspirational leader Yuan Chongwan, the Ming used Western artillery to defeat the Jin forces at the Battle of Ningyuan in 1626. Naraisi was injured and died soon afterwards, but the Ming failed to seize the chance to counterattack. The Jurchen's nemesis Yuan Chongwan was soon purged in a political struggle. While under the leadership of the new Khan Hongtaiji the Jurchens kept seizing Ming cities, defeated Ho Seon, a crucial ally of the Ming, in 1627 and 1636, and raided Jeep into China in 1642 and 1643. After the second Manchu invasion of Korea, Ho Seon Korea was forced to give several of their royal princesses as concubines to the King Manchu regent Prince Dorgan. In 1650 Dorgan married the Korean princess Ai Shun. 
The princess name in Korean was Yoo Sun and she was Prince Yi Kaeun's daughter. Dorgan married two Korean princesses at Liashan. The Manchus are sometimes mistaken as nomadic people, when in fact they were not nomads, but instead were a sedentary agricultural people who lived in fixed villages, farmed crops, practiced hunting and mounted archery. The fall of the Ming and the Qing takeover. The Ming faced several famines, floods, economic chaos, and rebellions. Li Zicheng rebelled in the 1630s in Shaanxi in the north, while a mutiny led by Zhang Zhanzhong broke out in Sichuan in the 1640s. Many people were killed in this self-proclaimed emperor's reign of terror. Just as Dorgan and his advisors were pondering how to attack the Ming, the peasant rebellions that were ravaging northern China were dangerously approaching the Ming capital Beijing. In February 1644, rebel leader Li Zicheng had founded the Shun dynasty in Xian and proclaimed himself king. In March his armies had captured the important city of Taiyuan in Shanxi. Seeing the progress of the rebels, on 5 April the Ming Chongzhen Emperor requested the urgent help of any military commandant in the empire, but it was too late. On 24 April Li Zicheng breached the walls of Beijing, and the emperor hanged himself the next day on a hill behind the forbidden city. He was the last Ming emperor to reign in Beijing. Soon after the emperor had called for help, powerful Ming general Wu Sangue had left his stronghold of Ningyuan north of the Great Wall and started marching toward the capital. On 26 April, his armies had moved through the fortifications of Shanghai Pass and were marching toward Beijing when he heard that the city had fallen. He returned to Shanghai Pass. Li Zicheng sent two armies to attack the pass but Wu's battle-hardened troops defeated them easily on 5 May and 10 May. Then on 18 May, Li Zicheng personally led 60,000 of his troops out of Beijing to attack Wu. At the same time, Wu Sangui wrote to Dorgan to request the Qing's help in ousting the bandits and restoring the Ming dynasty. Meanwhile, Wu Sangui's departure from the stronghold of Ningyuan had left all territory outside the Great Wall under king control. Two of Dorgan's most prominent Chinese advisors, Hong Cheng Chao and Fan Wencheng, urged the Manchu prince to seize the opportunity of the fall of Beijing to present themselves as avengers of the fallen Ming and to claim the mandate of heaven for the king. Therefore, when Dorgan received Wu's letter, he was already about to lead an expedition to attack northern China and had no intention to restore the Ming. When Dorgan asked Wu to work for the king instead, Wu had little choice but to accept. After Wu formally surrendered to the king in the morning of 27 May, his elite troops charged the rebel army repeatedly, but were unable to break the enemy lines. Dorgan waited until both sides were weakened before ordering his cavalry to gallop around Wu's right wing to charge Li's left flank. Li Zicheng's troops were quickly routed and fled back toward Beijing. After their defeat of the Battle of Shanghai Pass, the Shun troops looted Beijing for several days until Li Zicheng left the capital on 4 June with all the wealth he could carry. One day after he had defiantly proclaimed himself Emperor of the Great Shun, 